Welcome back, you hear Goldberg. Today I'll be talking about how you can stop being a nihilist. And we're going to get the angry comments. No, nihilism's a real philosophy. Stop saying that. I get it. Nihilism is often fairly or unfairly conflated with extreme pessimism and apathy. That's not really the focus. I wanted to talk about the generation, and it's typically young men, sometimes older people, who will just mill about deconstructing, devaluing, diminishing anything possible that might have a benefit to others or even themselves as an individual, which I believe is a great shame. So let's just uh, quickly revisit. This was the freedom versus legacy topic. And unfortunately, a lot of guys, the legacy part just totally flew over their head. And they were saying, oh, most legacies don't last unless you're one of the great men of history. Who cares? And this is extremely short-sighted because in the past, there was a lot of tradition passed down, but of course it was oral tradition. It may not have been written because maybe they didn't know how to write, didn't have paper, maybe the paper stuff got destroyed. But especially if you're just telling someone and maybe they tell their kids and their kids die young or perhaps just forget, it is lost. But in the current age, we have so much technology and it is much more difficult to destroy information. So just talking about, and this doesn't go that far back, but my great grandfather, who I never met, although we have a striking resemblance in the one portrait I possess, I've learned a lot about what he believes through his writings and also what he taught my grandfather and my father. So that's something you can continue to transmit. Uh, the books that I write, and I discussed this on MD's show, it is a form of legacy. But not just, let's say, if I have offspring, but uh, other people have been able to access, and they will transmit that in some form as well. Now, with the uh, use of video, you could actually record life lessons for your kids that would be saved, and then you might be influencing three or four generations down the line. We're so quick to say, oh, look at all these women that they don't care about respecting their family. Look at all these men who have just, uh, you know, become liberals and opposed all their culture. She's like, but what good faith attempts have been made to pass it on beyond some vague idea of freedom and democracy? When you truly pursue, I want these lessons, not just, oh, yeah, you know, capitalism, it's nonsense, but these lessons, these values and you inculcate that, and then you say, hey, you can give this to your kids as well. That's what a legacy happens to be. You can look at the way cultures have been destroyed. Is They always try to cut off the young generation from the old as far as learning you know, the religious traditions, the histories. They try to eliminate that because then you become this blank slate, and okay, now you're just going to be interested in making money or whatever is going to give you a higher position in this new system. So it has to be paid attention to. As far as where this form of nihilism comes from, I think it's just kind of uh, central to a lot of men in general, the modern male psyche, which is finding a reason to not have to change anything. You can use it to justify if you have a fear you don't want to overcome, if you have a weakness that you could certainly surpass, but you don't really want to, if you just don't feel motivated, the best way to justify that is to have an excuse. Uh, you see this with a lot of these MGTOW guys. You tell them, hey, you know, this would be good to change your diet, maybe work out for your own benefit. They'll say you're shaming them. Uh, anything which requires a person to get a little bit less comfortable, they will get, oh, defensive about. And the problem is, with that mentality, you're not going to learn, and you're not going to potentially discover more things about yourself, which sounds cliche, but it's absolutely true. If you keep everything nice and easy, this is just how I want it to be, you could very well be missing out on stuff that is going to shape you and lead you in different directions you didn't even know existed at that current uh, place in time. And even those guys, if you notice, the ones who are really nihilistic will go around and angrily like have comments, comment battles. They'll try to evangelize. They'll try to build up an audience to promote their nihilism. Because even though they say nothing matters, every human at a certain level has to have a motivational drive. 
And so if that comes in other people thinking the way I do and, you know, building up my own ego with this idea of nothing matters, they're going to go for it. So you're saying, well, if you you want a following to say nothing matters, maybe in fact something does matter and you could have a more productive and positive message to impart in that direction. As far as why or how you can potentially overcome nihilism, I would say start from a position of what your lifestyle happens to be. Do you live in a place where there's a lot of mountains and you don't get much sunlight? That is uh, actually more significant than you might imagine. You have to uh, check out your house too, because if your house doesn't get a lot of sunlight, you could potentially have mold issues and that could be affecting your health. No joke. If you're working night shift, you're not getting a lot of vitamin D. Consider changing shifts or at least uh, getting up early enough before your shift. You can spend some time on, outside and get that synthesis because I've known dudes, like a guy, he was an overnight supervisor for years. Pale as pale can be, very angry, very negative. He went on day shift and it was funny how his mentality totally changed. He actually was a lot more positive once he started getting more sunlight, believe it or not. So lifestyle changes can be important. You also should look at what you're consuming. Uh, obviously not a medical professional. This guy is though. Pretty good book. Uh, much of it is, you know, naturally derived. So you can try that out if you want to go with the whole, you know, modern industrial system you can. I don't necessarily advise it, but this is a good book. A lot of recipes, a lot of stuff, and that's going to affect it too. Many people don't realize their outlook on the world can be influenced by what they're putting in their body. So if you're using drugs, if you're eating like garbage, you're eating, you're drinking soda, eating frozen pizza all the time, that can have definitely an effect on how you are seeing things and how you want to view, you know, essentially your life. On that note, read and listen widely. You know, you, everyone should be looking towards, eh, maybe read it. You start out, read one or two books a month, build up from there. Once, twice a week, try to watch a video or a documentary, like a TED Talk, something. Don't make it all the same. You know, I've come across a lot of people that you'll suggest, hey, here's a book. I'm not going to read that. He's a liberal. Oh, because he's a liberal, you can't learn from him. Imagine that mentality and how destructive it is. It's like you'll have some people, if it's not the same political opinion, I'm not going to look at it. Or if they are not the same religion, I'm not going to pay attention. If they're not the same ethnic group, I'm not going to pay attention. That is a tremendous error. Think about it. Let's say you live in some small town in Kentucky and most people are Trump supporters. Maybe you've got a couple of Bernie booty boys. But for the most part, everyone thinks the same way. You're like, see, who cares? And then you read something, which you can probably get for free, like PDF Drive, and it's someone from the other side of the world who has grown up in an arguably less advantaged position and yet has a certain drive and passion for life. That's when your mental cogs start moving. You say, wait a second, how can I write off everything? And yet there's a person in a totally different environment with less stuff than I have available to me and yet they've got some meaning. And that's when you're going to, okay, I need to continue investigating this. It is especially important if you're young. You know, someone who's like a 70-year-old nihilist, if they benefit, that's fine. But a young person in particular who's 16 or 17 saying nothing matters. I mean, that's tragedy. And you know they haven't experienced or uh, explored enough to be able to say that. But because, again, there's always that excuse, I don't have to do anything. I always want a reason not to do anything. It's almost like a drug. And you have to be careful. Unfortunately, we have a lot of young men taking their own lives. And I think that's a great tragedy. That's where another thing comes in. And it goes both ways. Whether or not you subscribe to this nihilism or you just are of a different persuasion, human connection is critical. I'm not suggesting we're going to fix every problem, but you see a person, you see that they're kind of down in the dumps in this nihilist bin, talk to them more, you know, show them they have value. One of the biggest problems, if you really notice the people who go over the edge are the ones who are disconnected in large part. And the more 
that others are plugged into them, or frankly, if you are nihilistic and you start talking to different people, it is harder and harder to justify those positions because then you're saying, well, wait a second, the world is more complicated. There are folks with different ideas, different opinions, and how does this person actually have a purpose? And they've gone through a lot of stuff worse than I have, and yet they have possessed that position. So it is, there are so many different ways, but they require an individual to say, look, I'm not just going to align myself with utter stagnancy. I'm not just going to say, this is enough. I'm going to be curious. I get it. The world's screwed up. You want to say, oh, nothing has value. But if you're curious and you explore more, it becomes increasingly difficult to uh, maintain those opinions. In fact, back when I had more of this mentality and I was in the sort of uh, libertarian, yeah, all these people are scum. Yeah, just cut them off. You know, the strong survive, the Darwinist viewpoints. The more that I talk to people, that's what actually changed my perspective. Because it's easy when you don't know someone to just kind of make conclusions. And then when you have more of that interaction, it is, okay, this person has their own unique experiences. Uh, they have been imparted a certain legacy. And then you share between those two different backgrounds. And it is significantly can change your perspective.